Chapter 24, Starting Over, After My Hiatus, My Buddy Alan and I put together a great new band and named it Danger. He said my name should be Tommy Danger. Music was going well, but I needed to find some way to make daytime money. I took stock of my life, I'd been a rebel all these years and had really done myself a disservice. My grades were shit, and I had never even thought of going to college, I saw an advertisement in the newspaper seeking candidates in training for a store called Aaron Brothers Art Marts on La Brea Boulevard in Hollywood. I called and the guy on the line told me it was a store that sold all sorts of things, fine and imported art, Persian rugs, and unusual knick-knacks. They were also in the picture framing business. They were looking for people who had the potential to become managers. I got the job and began as a candidate in training. Seven new stores had just opened up. One day when I was at the front of their store in Studio City, California, this guy pulled up in a red GTS Ferrari. He stepped out looking like Wild Bill Hickok. With a big silver belt buckle, epaulets on his lapels and shining cowboy boots, I love your car, I said to him as he stepped towards me, he smiled at me. My boy, you love your family. You love your woman. You don't love your car. You enjoy your car. My name's Len Aaron. What's your name, son? Tommy, Tommy Garcia. He reached out and shook my hand. Would you help me get this painting out of the car? I leaned in and in the passenger seat of his sports car, was this wild abstract painting. All buckled in. I picked it up, and he said, if you can sell this, I'll put a brand new $100 bill in your pocket. I took the painting into the store and set it right up front on an easel, by the registers. When he walked into the store, everybody stood at attention as he passed through. He's one of the Aaron brothers. Before he left, I'd managed to sell the abstract painting, and true to his word, he gave me that $100. I worked my way up from candidate in training to manager within three months. I had a knack for setting things up on display in a way that made sense, and more than that, I treated people the way I'd learned from Father Divine exactly how to treat people. Father had this way of talking to you like you were the only person that mattered in that moment. One day, Father and I were in the kitchen, and he was talking to one of the cooks when someone came to ask him a question. She tried to interrupt his conversation, but he said, Excuse me, I'm speaking with this young lady here. I'll be with you in a minute. At the Aaron Brothers Art Store, no matter who was talking to me, from Len all the way to employees down the line, I paid attention to the person I spoke to and let them know they were important to me. This brought a great deal of respect from my fellow employees. Len noticed my skill for working with people, and he sent me to some of his least prosperous stores to try to turn business around, at his store in Burbank, which had an employer retention problem. He was losing money week after week. Len told me if I could turn it around, they'd make me a permanent manager, and he would give me a bonus. The first time I visited the store, I walked in like I was a customer. I walked through the aisles and spotted the problem immediately. Everything was a mess. You couldn't find something if you wanted to. It was dirty, and the things people bought the most weren't stocked. More than that, the attitude of all the employees stunk. Nobody could be bothered to help out. After watching everybody for a week, I put up a sign that said, All staff meeting Saturday at 9 a.m., I was one of the youngest people who worked for the store, and when I formulated my plan for how to turn business around, I thought about Father Divine. When his people weren't served at restaurants, they pooled their money together and bought the restaurant. I was going to do that with Aaron Brothers, that morning, with the employees gathered around me, I could tell they were nervous that I was there. I've been here all week, I said. I've observed you, and I know who is working and who is not. I'm here because this store is the worst one in the chain. I know we can change that. We are going to make it the best. The employees soon looked bored. They started talking to each other, listen, I said. There are a lot of things we can do to make this store better. First, we need to clean it up. We need to know where things are so we know what to order. Also, we are right by the movie studios. 
why aren't we selling to them? We need to stock directors' chairs, megaphones, and any other things that they might need, so we need to make space for that. I picked up a circular and showed it to them. We need to stock and display what we advertise so we can get people into the store. But we need to do it together. They still weren't convinced. If we can do this, if we can get this store to be a top earner, I get a bonus. It's $5,000. If you do this with me, I'll share that bonus with you. That got their attention, we contacted the studios, and found what getting products they wanted. I taught the employees how to display the merchandise so that all of the products were visible. After three months, the store was clean and well stocked. We had all encouraged each other to work harder towards the bonus, and we all earned it together. After that, Len thought of me as a troubleshooter. Somebody told him that I used to play tennis at a private school. He asked me about it, I heard you play tennis, my boy. I love tennis, he said. Why don't you come play with me at the club? I love to win. Are you any good, I used to be, I said, good, good. He took me to the club in his Ferrari, and we started playing with other executives. We were a great team, and we won most of our matches. After that, Len and I started hanging out all the time. He asked me what else I liked to do. I like to fish, I told him. He smiled and patted me on the back. Just what I like to hear. Len said the best fishing was in Loreto, Mexico, and when Len wanted to do something, that's what he did. We went to Loreto and chartered a 22-foot fishing boat called a Ponga to go fishing in the Sea of Cortez. I'd loved fishing before, but fishing at Loreto changed my life. I reeled in Dorado, yellowfin tuna and marlin. The 1970s were full of the sunshine promised in that brochure I'd seen when I boarded that plane to California. I was in a high-level management job with Aaron Brothers, spending my vacations fishing in Mexico with Len, when my past came back to haunt me.